I am so proud to be able to invite the Scribs Spelling Bee Champion, Monica Chowdhury, to our classroom. That is correct. Monica Chowdhury? You won the Spelling Bee. And you're like a legit celebrity. I guess. You are both connected by a deep love for your mother. Join forces like Farhan and Zoya. Farhan and Zoya? They are brother-sister Bollywood power duo. I don't know that one. Yeah, I've never heard of Google it. Google it, you f***ing fools! You can't just take care of people your whole life without taking care of yourself. You're pathetic. You got nothing else to do than live at home in your mom's basement and be the little kids in your spare time. I don't live in the basement. I'm on the second floor. I have my own bathroom. You know that. Why did you come back? It was never good enough for you. Sunny protected you for so long. Maybe it's your turn to protect him. <laughs> we promised each other that we would get out of this boring ass town and do big things. Ladies first. I don't see any ladies. All I see is a bad ass bitch. Okay. All right, so hi, I'm Michelle DePacina and I'm a writer for Next Shark. Today I'm with Ritesh Rajan and we'll be talking about Sujata Day's 2020 film Definition Please, which is also now available to stream on Netflix. So Ritesh, um, please first tell me about what Definition Please is and the character that you portray. Um, Definition Please is a family dramedy about a um, Indian American family that lives right outside of Pittsburgh that uh, has to deal with kind of the skeletons that they have in their closet. Um, Sujata Day, who plays a character named Monica, she's uh, a former spelling bee champion who's kind of amounted to nothing in adulthood. She's kind of stayed at home. Um, she has her, her job at home, uh, tutoring kids in, in sort of uh, spelling bee techniques. And she takes care of their uh, stick, sick mom. I play Sonny, uh, who's the younger brother of Monica. And then our mom is played by Anna Kaja. Um, and what you find out by watching the film is that my character uh, suffers from bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. And the movie kind of focuses on Sonny coming back home on the one year anniversary of um, their father's death and how the family has to kind of uh, uncover their demons and, and face each other and, and, you know, what families do best, <laughs> love and hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Um, so this film tackles, um, you know, South Asian stereotypes, mental illness, bullying and family relationships and pressures, specifically the pressure of success that mostly Asian parents put upon mm -hmm. their children. And some of these are pretty occurring themes, but you know, we're rarely given films where we can see this happening in the Indian American home setting. So I first off want, wanted to know, um, how was it like for you to grow up as an Indian American? Was it anything like that of the characters in Definition, Please? Or, you, know, you, you know, I I grew up in a very close-knit family. Uh, I have an older brother, younger sister. Um, both my parents are, they immigrated. I'm first generation, I was born here. My brother was born in India. My sister was born in, in the States. We're all from New York. Both my parents are doctors. Uh, so there was a there was pressure, you know, like like a lot of Asian families, South Asian and broader Asian cultures. Um, there's a lot of pressure to succeed and do better than the previous generation. And you know, I told my parents, I'm going to be an actor, and they're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> no, but I, I, you know, in my particular uh, situation, they were incredibly supportive. I grew up very, very lucky. Um, my parents have been very much involved kind of in my career path in the best way that Asian parents are involved in their kids' lives and everything, you know what I mean? Uh, so I, I always felt that I had a certain level of freedom that I know is not probably uh, accustomed to a lot of other Asian kids and their, and their families. So for me, um, I have a certain sense of responsibility to be able to tell honest stories on the screen. 
Um, and so it was important to me to be able to tell a story that was accurate to the South Asian experience, especially when we were bringing in sort of the mental health aspect. So I do relate to Sonny in the fact that he is close to his family and his siblings, but I haven't, I haven't had the same sort of uh, obstacles that he, he sort of runs into. All right, great. You actually answered my question, my like next question, how oh, man. parents <laughs> reacted, you know, <laughs> no, you're not going to be a doctor. Well, I, I can elaborate a little bit on that. You know, my parents kind of were like, are you sure this is what you want to do? I thought I was going to be a doctor growing up, you know, at a younger age. When I mean younger, I mean like second grade, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> my dad is a hand surgeon and my mom is a radiologist. And my brother's older than me. Um, he's 10 years older than me. So he kind of knew that he wasn't going to go into medicine. And then my, me and my younger sister are close in age. So they were like, oh, you know, well, two, one of us will be a doctor. And uh, all three of us are in the arts. My brother's a producer and my sister's also an actor. So <laughs> blame my parents. Blame them. <laughs> they gave us the, the, the bug, apparently, somewhere, someone, someone in, the, in the family, the bloodline. Rub bell against a stereotypical doctor or lawyer. <laughs> well, we always told them, I was like, this is why you guys immigrated to this country, you know, to um, when we talk about it, kind of big picture, you know, they left India because they wanted to make a better life for themselves and their future generations. And in order for them to leave home, they, there weren't many choices. You know, they had to be a doctor, they had to be a lawyer, an engineer, uh, something STEM related so they could get into a better situation. We're in a better situation now, and uh, that allows the next generation to make their choices and, and be artists and, and be whatever they want to be, you know, and, and really kind of spread our, our culture in the best ways possible, you know, and I think art is a great medium for that. Yeah, I think you said that perfectly. <laughs> And um, so can you tell me a little bit about the family dynamics and the South Asian stereotypes that, you know, the film was able to tackle? You know, for us, we wanted to tell a story where being Indian wasn't a, a crutch. You know, a lot of the times when we see Asian stories, South Asian stories, you know, there's a massive component of, of the storytelling that's like, oh, we're Asian and this is what we do and everything we do is Asian. And, you know, it's like, well, yes and no. You know, here we're uh, uh, an Indian American family. And yes, it takes place in a house where an Indian family was raised, but we're throwing you straight into the world of the customs and the cultures. We're not spending time explaining to you what, you know, the food is or what the clothes are or the, you know, religious ceremonies. You're just in the moment, in the shoes of somebody else and experiencing it. And if you can learn something from that, that's wonderful. We focus on the relationships. And if you can take something away from the relationships, you know, everybody has a mom, right? So we wanted to focus on the relationship between the, the kids and her mom. We wanted to focus on the sibling relationships because we wanted people to relate to the emotions, not necessarily like, oh, they're wearing a lenga or that's a sari, or I have a room in my house that where we do pujas, right? It's like, obviously the people who are not Hindu are not going to have a room, a puja room, right? But maybe they can relate to, oh man, oh, we got to go to church or like, oh, my sister's annoying me or my mom is annoying me, you know, like those types of feelings everyone experiences. And that's what we wanted to dial in. And at the same time, if we can sneak in Indian culture, we didn't sneak in it at all. It was there on the forefront. It, you're learning something new. And that's what we wanted to accomplish. We didn't want to hit people over the head. We wanted people to really experience the emotion of the film. So your, your character that, that you portrayed, he's, um, he struggles with bipolar disorder, right? But he yes. is so full of love. And we can see this in the film's flashbacks mm -hmm. of you know standing up to sit for his sister Yes. And also in his decision to move to another state, thinking that that would best help his family. So yeah. I was wondering, what did you learn from your character, Sonny, and, and that you also hope viewers can learn from? You know, Sonny is dealing with something that I think a lot of people, um, it's, a, it, it's a struggle that a lot of people, I think, are ashamed of. And especially in the Asian community, especially in the South Asian community. And I, and I hope that when people watch this film, they see someone who is genuinely 
a good person, someone who means the best, who really is trying to um, really work on his relationships with positivity and love and see that he is also struggling with something that has been so destructive. Um, and the reason that it's become this destructive is because he's let it snowball. He hasn't, you know, stood up to it. He hasn't spoken about it with his family. And on the, on the other side, his family also kind of has ignored it with the, ex with the uh, uh, exception of, of Monica's character, who's obviously like, hey, you need to go to see a doctor. You need to stay on your medication. Um, and instead of it being like a you versus me, you know, at the end of the movie, it's becoming like, hey, we're all working on this together, right? Because this affects all of us. Um, and I hope that people take away that it, it's not something that people should be ashamed of. You know, in Asian culture, it's like, oh, if there's something wrong or something sick with somebody, it's like, oh, it's shameful, right? Like we can't let, you know, the neighbors or auntie and uncle know down the street, like, oh, oh gosh, what could they say? Oh dear, like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's like, come on, we're past that now, right? And we have the emotional intelligence to have these conversations and we should be honest with each other because if we don't talk about this now, it's only going to get worse. Right. And, and Sujata tells these stories about communities she's grown up with, with her friends, you know, he, they have a roof over their head. They're getting good grades. You know, everything's good. There's food on the, on the table. Why are they depressed? And then sometimes it's like, well, they, they have an illness and that has to be addressed. And I hope this starts conversations it makes people feel, um, you know, just not as afraid or, you know, these obstacles are as daunting. I think it, it starts all with communication. And I hope that it starts a dialogue about mental health, especially in our communities. For sure. That's also definitely what I got from the movie. So, you know, thank you for sharing that. So uh, tell me about the production. How was it like for you to not only work and star in a film with a cast that's mostly South Asian Americans, but also be in a movie that specifically centers on your Indian background and your culture? And why is this narrative and diversity so important? It's important because that's what reflects real life. Um, I think it's, it's, as an actor, you know, as an artist, when I see other South Asians on the screen, um, it, it feels good. There's a certain level of, of, wonder and imagination that sparked different differently um there's a certain level of inspiration that occurs when i'm watching others you know south asian artists it's like i can do that too and that's something i never really had growing up you know the closest thing i had i had as a kid growing up was like i remember watching smart guy all the time i don't know if you ever watch the shows with taj maori but him and i are similar age and seeing just another small you know like brown kid on screen I was like, I can do that too. And it's just as simple as that. When you go, I can do that too. You never know what kind of doors that's going to open, what kind of uh, future that will lead to. And it, it just makes me go, wow, is this what white people are experiencing all the time? You know, it's like, holy shit. When I see the, like a love story or, you know, a psychological drama or a thriller or just even like an indie family drama, I'm like, wow. Is this the feeling that they get when they watch movies and the art? There's something visceral and I think just, you know, a, a much more um, aggressive. And I don't mean that in a threatening way. I just mean that in a, in a very sort of inspirational way. You're like, it really she grabs you and shakes you and you go, whoa, this really affects me or, or, or inspired me or, or triggers me or helped me learn something. And um, that's, that's what I hope. You know, I want to tell more authentic stories. I want to tell stories about Indian American culture. And that was a big thing for us, was telling the most authentic story and telling the most authentic version of bipolar disorder through an Indian American lens or an Asian family lens and how it's portrayed and how does it affect the relationships of the family members. Okay, and uh, this may sound weird, but um, <laughs> I, I searched your name on YouTube and the first video I found. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first video you found on YouTube when you typed oh, in my name? Oh, <laughs> uh, you were singing to a whole new world, but you guys switched up the lyrics. Yeah. Thinking about finally getting diversity in films. Yeah, and a diverse film. Amazing. <laughs> Diverse film, a diverse film, where you're the lead, and you're 
only It's just a star For inclusive art Oh, thank you. Actually, that's that's the first time I worked with Sujata. Yeah, I was uh, professionally. Wondering, how did you guys come up with it and why? So we actually, we met on a panel um, called We Own the Eighth, which focuses on Asian uh, diversity in film and television, hosted by AJ Raphael and Dante Bosco. So they were hosting this wonderful panel. They invited us. I've known AJ for many, 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 many years. Um, and he was like, hey, do you want to come check, do this for us? I was absolutely, at the time, uh, was doing Stitchers and Russian Doll and coming off all of that stuff. And so that's where I met Sujata because she was on Insecure. And, you know, obviously two Indian people, we did the Indian handshake, secret Indian handshake. And I was like, all right, we'll, we'll chat later. And then AJ was doing a show down the road and was like, hey, uh, I know both of you guys auditioned for the live action Aladdin. Um, would you guys want to sing a whole new world? I'm doing this kind of live uh, musical show, variety show. And we were like, yeah, let's do it. But then Sujata came up with the incredible idea of being like, hey, can I, can we do something a little different? Like we'll sing to the tune of whole new world, but I'll write something funny. Like, are you open to that? And we were like, absolutely. And then, so she wrote the lyrics to a diverse film. And then AJ obviously played the piano and kind of the rest was history. And to kind of tie it back into the movie, at the end of filming that, uh, the the spoof video, she was like, hey, so I'm writing this movie. Um, it's called Definition Please. It's like a small, you know, Indian American family dramedy. Um, I would love for you to just read it when I'm, when I'm done with it. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I was expecting whatever. I'm going to talk to her in six months, in a year. She forgot about me. And then a couple of weeks later, she called me and she's like, hey, the script is done. I sent it to you. Um, also, by the way, I want you to play my brother. Let me know. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit. Thanks for the offer. But first, let me read it. Make sure it doesn't suck. And as you can tell, I'm the lucky one because Suj was uh, so gracious to pick me. And, and, and honestly, my, my, my journey in the movie was... was um, really, really safe and wonderful and loving. And I owe so much to Sujata and Anna just for taking care of me always uh, and making kind of the set a really, really safe place and, and giving me just kind of a sounding board artistically to bounce off of. And Anna's also played my mother before on my old show. She was my mom on Stitchers. So, you know, we can't get away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have a lot of pretty interesting and funny scenes in the film including that um the funny sunny show that you know you uh -huh. put up for jaya or even that one scene where you interrupted sujada and jake when they were in the car it's, it's becoming a lot of people's <laughs> favorite scene <laughs> but for, for multiple you, reasons personally what was your favorite scene to film and why oh uh, i mean it's that that scene was the the you know the car scene is outdoors I don't want to give away too many spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the movie. And if you haven't seen the movie, go check it out on Netflix right now. Stop. Stop this interview. Go put it on your list. <laughs> um, there is a scene where I interrupt my sister, getting her groove on, and I'll just leave it to that. And so that was a really wonderful scene because for those who have seen the movie, you kind of see how the scene progresses, obviously. And I, I, I always use that scene as an example as the, the relationship that Sonny and Monica have, because obviously it's, it starts off with this really kind of funny, jovial, real thing going on, two people getting it on, and then the, the little brother, the annoying little brother shows up and interrupts it. Obviously, there's a little comedy there because of external factors. Um, and then it, the scene takes a turn, um, and you see how stressful their sibling relationship is. And you see for the first time, like, oh, something is wrong here. Like, why is she so mad at him? She's mad at him. She must have done something really, really, uh, some, some, maybe something unforgivable, perhaps. Um, and it kind of, you know, just leads into everything, like locking of the doors. And then you see like, oh man, there's something going on here. And to me, that's my, that's my favorite scene. It, one of my favorite scenes in the movie also was the most fun to film just because we shot in Sujata's childhood home. That house is her actual house that she grew up in and her parents are still there. So she wrote notes to everybody on the street. 
hey, we're filming this movie. So when I'm running around my tidy whities, the entire street is out there in their lawn chairs, cracking open their beers, watching it like it was their own show. And I'm, you know, out there doing jumping jacks and push-ups, trying to look buff. <laughs> my underwear, my socks. So um, it was a good time. We had a really, I had a great time filming the movie. It was a lot of run and gun. And we shot at the speed of light. We shot it in 12 days. This is an argument. Some people will say 10. But I was there for 12 days. So. <laughs> That's great. I actually feel like you're similar to the character you portrayed in the way that, you know, your energy is the same and this positive vibe. I, I try to be I try to be positive. You know, when it comes to the positive energy to Sunny, uh, when we were talking about the bipolar disorder, we wanted to make it so that when you saw him positive, or at least what I wanted to bring to the table was that he was actually in a, in a positive manic state. He never is in a neutral balanced state. Cause if he's neutral and he's balanced, he know he understands what's going on. So that's why I, always, I wanted to kind of bring this frenetic positive hyperness to him so that the pendulum would swing all the way to the opposite direction when he did have those moments. And so there's very few moments in the movie where he is kind of just neutral. Um, one of them is when they're kind of doing the high jump scene. The other one is when they're playing carom board. Um, but otherwise, he's always swinging in the movie. The, the emotional range is kind of the, the clock is ticking. And it's, you know, when is this time bomb just going to go off? Like, what's going to trigger him? And when he's not triggered, he's always super, you know, really happy, almost like a, like a newborn puppy, just like energy, you know, just peeing everywhere. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of, uh, uh, that's the image I get in my head when he first arrives kind of at the door. And he's like, did you get hush puppies? Did you bring, did you get me hush puppies? You know, it's that kind of, you're like, oh, what's, I don't understand. So that it convinces everyone else around her, like, hey, what's going on? He wasn't that bad to you. And then she's harboring the secret. Right. So um, I also know this, not like a very, not, it's not like the center of the show, obviously, but um, there were a lot of Indian food included in the film, like shahi, roti, which is like one of my favorites yeah. I grew up with, or even that drink, Thumbs Up. Yeah. I'm also curious, you know, are these also the dishes that you grew up with? And you have like- so a one of the beautiful things about this movie and one of the beautiful things about India is that there are many, many, many different cultures, depending on where you're from. Um, you know, uh, people from the North eat different food than people in the South and different languages and different customs. Uh, so Sujata is Bengali. So everything in the movie is Bengali. So a lot of the, the, all, all the languages, the kind of cultural terms, even the way the words they use for food, um, different from what I grew up with. I'm Tamil, so I'm South Indian. So very different food. We are obviously making sag paneer and roti and all that stuff. And um, they all use different words. So it was, it was a learning lesson for me as well. Um, you know, in my house, we grew up eating dosa and idli and all kind of traditional South Indian foods. Um, but in the movie, you get a real sort of insider's look at uh, Bengali, cult Bengali culture. Even the music in the movie is all original, all Bengali. It's not in Hindi. I have all these people who speak Hindi, like, yo, the, it's not in Hindi. And I'm like, yeah, because Sujata doesn't understand Bengali um, and she's Bengali. So she wanted to do a movie in Bengali that represents how she grew up. And I think she did an incredible, incredible job of, of doing that. And, and, and also at the same time, exposing um, a, 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 such a rich culture to people who may have never even heard of it. Okay, so just to wrap up our interview, you know, besides the spelling bee words we learn in the movie, <laughs> um, what do you think viewers can take away from this film? And what do you hope it will accomplish for the Indian American community, for the Asian community, and just a movie as a whole? Yeah, you know, first and foremost, I just hope people enjoy it. You know, we are, I think sometimes we forget uh, we're artists to entertain. We made a movie that hopefully people are entertained by, you know, period, end of story. I hope people on a larger sense, I hope people are able to watch the movie and are inspired or, or can relate to something and take something away that they didn't have inside of them before they started the movie. And whether that be, hey, I'm going to evaluate myself and my mental health or 
I'm going to pick up the phone and call my parents and just say hi, or my siblings and just say hi, or am I really working towards my full potential? You know, you have two young characters in this movie who obviously are capable of a lot more, but because they're unwilling to face their demons, it stops them from progressing forward. And even if it's that, like, you know what, I am going to apply for that job, or I am going to, you know, spend the extra hours studying for my SATs. I know probably all the Asians out there are scared of their SATs. <laughs> or whatever it may be, you know, basketball, sports, chess, dance, cooking, food, artistic, medicine, whatever it is, right? Just understanding that mental health is health. And sometimes if, if you're not right, it, it, it's good to just take a, a, a maintenance check and make those phone calls and tell people that you love them because it really does take community to succeed, especially in the, in the field that I'm in. You know, this movie would not get made without the love and support and the persistence and the hard work of every single person involved in front of the camera and behind the camera. And, you know, and my parents asking me every day if I sold the movie or not <laughs> for two years. So that helps too. <laughs> but ultimately, I just, I just hope someone, just, the people just take away uh, something positive from it, you know, and, and, like I said, on terms of the South Asian and Indian artist scene in America, I hope it inspires others to create their own work and tell their own stories. And this opens doors for more opportunities and shows people that just because a movie focuses on a specific culture doesn't mean that it can't be mainstream or it can't be successful. You know what I mean? Definitely. Right. There you have it. That's like good ending quote there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um thank you so much for the interview thank you michelle that was so sweet thank you and, and i'm so sorry about being late I, I totally fucked up that was my fault no that's okay let me just stop recording for now you can record that put that in there you can tell him i was late <laughs> i'll be like of course he was late he's an indian guy he's on indian standard time <laughs> <laughs>